I'm in the lovely and best-selling Mazda CX-5, and the more I drive this, the more I question, is it even worth getting a modern luxury vehicle? Mazda's really stepped up their game. They're banging on the doors of Lexus, Infiniti, and Acura. Today, let's get into it. <laughs> Now, the Mazda CX-5 hasn't really changed in what seems like forever. It's definitely overdue for a redesign, at least according to, you know, timelines of manufacturers. You know, every six to eight years, there should be a redesign. Mazda CX-5 seems like it hasn't changed much in a decade and hasn't needed to. In fact, it gets better with age. And, you know, yes, Mazda has come out with a CX-50 that's built here at Seistein, but, you know, the CX-5, still built in Japan, it feels like luxury quality inside and out. So let's get into the powertrain. Powertrain on this model, this is the all-wheel drive. Well, all of them are all-wheel drive standard. But this has the 2.5 turbo, Skyactiv-G turbo with up to 200 and I think it's around 256 horsepower if you put on 93 octane if you use 87 it's going to get you around 227 horsepower but what doesn't change much is the torque um, so if you just put regular in here you're still going to get 310 pound feet of torque <laughs> and made it through a six-speed automatic whether you get the naturally aspirated or the turbo models i love this automatic now it doesn't handle the best Meaning when I throw this in the turns, yes, the steering feels better than pretty much any luxury competitor. It feels very firm and, and decisive, but uh, you still have a little bit of body roll. The car doesn't rotate nearly as well as what we see with the, let's say the RDX or the new Lexus NX for comparison, but the powertrain itself is far smoother. It feels much more luxurious compared to uh, Acura, um, maybe even Infinity and even Lexus's uh, powertrains. I need to use that torque a little bit to get around Mr. Short Biker Shorts. Um, the brakes in here are fantastic, very linear, very progressive, and I love driving this. Yes, it doesn't handle quite as well some of the, it's a luxury competition, but they cost a lot more, and these are luxury vehicles. They're not necessarily performance vehicles, and Mazda really hasn't bought into the the sportiness if you want more of the sportiness maybe get the cx50 but i love this vehicle uh for its practicality as well compared to the cx50 the roof line's much shorter the vehicle feels bigger this feels taller and more headroom um it's more compact it's easier to park than its cx50 and yes like the powertrain i keep coming back to the powertrain because it's just sm so smooth and so good acura's powertrain it you know to get the satisfaction out of it you really have to rev it toyota's it's okay well should i say lexus's it's okay with the 2.4 turbo it just doesn't feel as refined it's not nearly as smooth it doesn't sound as good as this <laughs> and uh, the six-speed auto in here is perfect it's not the quickest shifting but man is it smooth and that's what luxury is all about luxury is all about smooth and what about the x here does it is it is it competitive enough against acura infinity lexus on the exterior i think so you know we just got a refresh on the, it seems like just like a refresh i think it's a 2022 model year now we're 2024 and we got updated headlights and tail lights different front bumper i think it looks great i think it looks very premium on the outside and that's you know despite what trim level you get i think the mazda cx5 looks great um i have i talked about the braking in here very smooth very uh, linear predictable and yeah mazda's got a great brake feel all right let's talk about the interior real quick um it's pretty plain um mazda has more of a minimal design language compared to its uh japanese competitors and i love it you know we actually have wood touch points here on the dash take that <laughs> lexus lexus has a very plain non-stitch dash on the lexus nx um, and it's just, in my opinion, this is far more upscale compared to the more luxury like Acura uh, and Lexus competition. I even have wood grain here on the door panel. It's just kind of monotone in here. Everything's very dark, very black. I would have, you know, even though this is wood, it would have been nice to have maybe a lighter bamboo to contrast with the black. Uh, but for around $40,000, this uh, top of the line signature has head up display. I don't have a panel roof in here. If you need a panel roof, maybe get the CX-50. but. Panel roofs are, are, I don't know, I don't feel like they're as important as they used to be a few years back. Um, leather wrapped steering wheel. Uh, I have heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel. Okay, come on, Armada. Jeez Louise. 
you know, touchscreen. Here's the thing. Yes, I have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in here. For some reason, it's not connecting. Uh, so, you know, I pretty much have to be wired in here for Android Auto. I don't know why, even though they have advertised uh, wireless Android Auto for 2024, I haven't been able to get it to work quite yet, but it's probably user error. Um, but with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, I can use it as a touchscreen, but I have to be stopped. Once I start moving, even though the screen is perfect for its proximity, I can easily get to it. You can't use it as a touchscreen, um, not with the base software, not with uh, Android Auto either, unfortunately. I do like having a volume knob. I still have the rotary dial here. Uh, take this Lexus. I have a real leather wrap shifter here, not some little nub that uh, is an imposter for a shifter. So yeah, I really like this interior and I like it better than Acura's push button malarkey stuff too. So is it as quiet as a Lexus? I would say probably as quiet as a Lexus NX, you know, up to about 50, 55 miles an hour. Um, it feels a little bit quieter than the Toyota Venza that I tested a couple weeks ago. And I also recommend the Venza. I would take a Venza over Lexus NX or RX. It's just a better buy. What about comfort? Now that's a thing. The CX-5 in the past has had awfully hard seats. I don't know if they've changed it in the past year or two, but I feel like the seat's really comfortable. I have good visibility in here. I should probably move the visor for better visibility. I have good visibility in here. The windows aren't too cropped and tight down like the CX-50. Uh, the armrests are typically Mazda ridiculously soft, so your elbows can just sink down into them. Yeah, but the seats, seats are comfortable. And I don't remember the last time I can say that in a CX-5. So maybe they did some wizardry over the last couple of years to soften these puppies up, but I would not hesitate to take this on a long road trip. Would I like to maybe a little bit longer cushion down here at the bottom, but that's pretty much any vehicle I drive that doesn't have an extendable thigh cushion um, support. Also, I believe this has better leg room than the CX-50 in the back. So the CX-5, it's just a better vehicle overall, in my opinion, unless you like the edgy design of the CX-50, but in the back in the signature we have heated outboard seats also in the armrest you have usb a's even though you have usb c's up here underneath this armrest also i believe for 2024 they've added i stop engine start stop technology but i don't see it here in this turbo model so it's probably just for the naturally aspirated two and a half models with around 180 190 horsepower man i got it straight away so pedal down very decisive and it just Gosh, it's like a V8. I've always said this about Mazda's two and a half liter turbo engine. It doesn't like revving high, but that's perfect for luxury. It is super smooth, tons of grunt in the low end, and it pushes and shoves this vehicle up to speed very, very quickly. And it's great for everyday driving because I don't have to bury my foot to maximize the revs, to maximize the horsepower. The torque is so low down that I'm able to get around traffic without having to exhaust my right foot too much. Doing a U-turn here, turning radius is pretty good. Foot into the pedal. Oh, so satisfying. So satisfying. I feel like this powertrain is more of a match to this size of vehicle than it is in the CX-30. The CX-30 is a very light vehicle, but when you put this powertrain in it, it just doesn't feel as balanced as it does here. Um, I feel, even though this still feels, oh, there's a nice CX-5 right there looking gorgeous, but yeah, it feels very balanced here. I don't feel like it's too front wheel drive heavy, or should I say front engine heavy, um, like the CX-30 Turbo does. Like the CX-30 Turbo though, I don't have a lot of rear uh, power, even though it's all wheel drive standard. Uh, the Lexus all wheel drive system, the Acura all wheel drive system definitely can send more power and torque to the rear wheels. And also those systems do a lot better with torque vectoring. So there you have it. I would pick this over any Lexus NX or RX um, due to the bang for your buck and the, the staying true to build quality and staying true to um, the overall luxury and not trying too hard for sportiness and losing in its identity in the process. Even though this is still fun to drive, doesn't handle quite as well as the more luxurious counterparts. And I'd put it right up there with the Toyota Venza in terms of desirability, bang for your buck, getting luxury for the cost of mainstream, getting great features, great design, great powertrains, but not having to spend an arm and a leg 
uh, for that luxury badge that doesn't provide any more luxury than the Venza as well as the CX-5. So I'm gonna end it there. Mazda, keep doing what you're doing. Their brand is growing quite steadily here in the United States. They might be able to get back to their 90, early 90s, maybe late 80s success that they had here in North America. And with the CX-5, just getting better with age it's crazy that it is but i guess they just did such a good job with the initial product that you know as the other competitors downsized their engines and came out with you know buzzy four cylinders that just aren't quite as good as this two and a half liter i just don't i can talk forever about the monster cx5 it is a home run great thing bang for your buck excellent luxury for mainstream prices uh, and tons of features, tons of quality. Can't say enough about the Mazda CX-5. I also can't say enough about other Mazda products too. Make sure to watch my review on the CX-90 three-row crossover. They've, uh, they've done some magic with that offering luxury-like powertrains uh, for, main, for more mainstream prices as well. But thank you guys for watching. I'll check you in the next one. If you made it this far, smash the like button. If not for me, for the amazing Mazda CX-5. And uh, if you like what Mazda is doing, smash that like button too. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day and peace out.